Hi, Arthi. Welcome to Urban Asian. It's a pleasure to speak with you today about your time on season three of Indian Matchmaking. Hey, Malika. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Of course. I'm really excited to speak with you about your journey and your time on the show um, and how everything has turned out for you. Absolutely. I'm ready to get started. Awesome. So my first question, how did you get the show? How did it come to you? And what kind of intrigued you to do the show? Yeah, so um, I know in uh, Netflix world, uh, everything looks like really fast in the timeline, um, but this was almost two years of my life. So I have been filming um, since 2021. Um, and I actually got on the show through a friend that was on season one. Um, his name is Jay Wadwani. So some of you might recognize him. Uh, he's a really good friend of mine. We grew up together uh, and he, at the time I was, you know, very single uh, and he recommended me to the producers and that's kind of how they reached out. Um, and so I've been doing all of my interviews since like February, March of 2021. So it's been a long time. Okay. So that honestly is really interesting because it led leads me to my next question. How was the filming process for you? And now that you said that you were kind of on season two as well, how was there any difference that you felt between season two and season three in terms of filming? So um, they kind of filmed them together. They didn't tell us who was going to be on season two or who was going to be on season three. Um, I really thought I was slated for season two. Um, as you can tell, my story kind of changed. And I think that's why I got, got pushed to season three. And I'm super happy about it. I'm very happy about, um, you know, how my story turned out, how everything looked. Um, the filming process itself um, was a little tough. It was long days uh, and there's just a lot going on. Um, but overall, it like it was great. I, I really loved the production crew. Um, I really loved everybody, even to the editors. It was it's been a phenomenal um, process for me and I truly believe who I am in person kind of does portray really well overall in in the show um, there are some things that were you know I wouldn't you know lo have loved but it's it's part of the process right yeah, and I will say I have seen so much love for you on social media on all over, you know, my social media pages. I see so many people feel like they can relate to you. Um, and I definitely can feel that relatability coming um, through all of your, you know, your story arc and your storyline throughout the show. Um, yeah, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, my favorite uh, parts that like probably sit my uh, Instagram DMs are when people that, you know, are in relationships or married to people of a different faith uh, and they share their story with me. So I love hearing those. I want to see more of those. Um, and then I think the other half of my DMs are just asking if my brother's single. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Um, so kind of getting into the matchmaking process itself and working with Simondi, you know, you kind of mentioned that the matchmaking process to you seems like something that's an in-between between between an arranged marriage and a love marriage. So after having gone through that process, has that belief changed for you in any way, or do you kind of still um, have that, you know, thought process about it? Um, I still have that thought process about it. Um, I don't think Seema does, but I have that thought process where I, I, fully believe that it is a half and half just like if a friend were to introduce you to someone and say hey I think this person's good for you do you want to meet them I'm absolutely open to meeting someone as long as it's not my mom suggesting I'm absolutely open to meeting someone um and and going out with them and um what you didn't see is I did go out with these guys multiple times um the the guy that um we were kind of talking about that you know I rejected after one meeting um happens to be not shown on the show that we went out uh, and happens to be one of my really good friends um which is so funny because we knew it instantly that we were going to be friends and I just didn't want to pursue that but I absolutely believe that it is when you're being matched with someone you know you meet them and it's like, okay, if it clicks, if it works, you want to continue on, then that's the part of it that you want the love marriage for, right? Um, but the arranged marriage side, like my parents did, where they met and they were engaged and they were married within a month, I did not want. So there's there's that difference. I do believe it's still in the middle. 
Yeah, so kind of going off of that, how would you describe your experience, you know, working with Seema, filming with her and just that entire experience as a whole? Um, so I would say, um, you know, overall working with Seema was was fine. It was it was it was OK. I think that we had a lot of differences. Um, she's you know, she she reminds me of my mom sometimes. And I, you know, I, I just feel like there's certain things that my mom says or like, or suggests to me or tells me to do that I'm just ignoring. And so that's kind of the part of like Seema that pulls out. Um, and, and she has every right to, to kind of be like that because, you know, she was raised very traditionally. She also had an arranged marriage. She believes that. I just believe that we live in a very different modern time. Um, I'm in my thirties. I've done well for myself. I'm happy where I am and I'm happy single and I'm not going to change my life unless I can find someone that is compatible in almost every field for me. And I think that, you know, I understand that people, you know, when they get to their thirties and they've been dating for a while, have baggage, um, and you have to make a small, slight adjustment to what they what they come with but i think at overall you can't change people i think who they are is who they are and they're taking you have to take them for face value and if they're not right for you then they're not right for you um but overall like working with sema i think we just had different views um and i truly wish her the best in all of her matchmaking endeavors it just was not for me yeah so i would say one of your biggest kind of differences between your uh, outlook and kind of thought process on it and Seema's was the importance of attraction and the importance of chemistry. Um, so do you kind of think that that was a difference in generational thinking or do you kind of think it was just an outlook difference between both of you? Um, I think it's generational. Uh, so for me, I believe that Seema has said it multiple times that a marriage is between families. Um, uh, my marriage is not between a family. <laughs> The families have not even actually met. Um, so for me, it is very different um, because it's about us. And Seema kind of hit on it a little bit this season where she talked about, you know, people in America, when they get married, they're focused on themselves. And I think that's that's 100% accurate is because when you get married or when you find someone or you have children, that is your, now your family. That is who like you have to put 100% into. So when you involve other people into your relationship, that's where we see like a lot of the drama. Um, and, and, and that's what all the like Indian serial TV shows are about, right? The mother-in-law versus the daughter-in-law. Um, and so I feel like it's very generational thinking that attraction um, can't be there. Uh, and I think it's also, you know, very, very traditionally thinking that like, yeah, I understand that like looks fade and that's not what it is. But that first attraction is what is really like that spark that uh, it, if that pulls you in and then their personality pulls you in and every part of it pulls you into that person, you're going to be there for a long time and you're going to work to make it happen. Yeah, and so you do start dating someone on the show and when you and Jamal start dating pretty seriously, we as viewers see a conversation you have with a friend about how difficult it might be for your family to be completely on board because he's Muslim and you're Cindy. Do you think that our generation, you know, people who are watching the show, who are first generation Indian Americans or South Asian Americans, can maybe help change this societal perception around, you know, interreligious marriages and things like that? A hundred percent. Um, I think that nowadays most people are marrying um, with different faiths or different religions or different backgrounds. I don't think I think it's even harder to find a hundred percent of. Uh, anybody from a certain um, religion background. Um, so it's it's one of those things that everybody's kind of become this melting pot, right? Um, and so I 100% believe that it is, uh, it's changing. Um, the landscape itself is changing and some of the traditional values now are no longer part of this. Yeah, and I definitely think that viewers can also see that shift, even from season one to season three, that focus on, um, you know, traveling the world. Now Seema has clients all over the world and kind of seeing those cultural differences and generational differences, I think is also incredibly relatable to viewers. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, and and that's the thing is that like everybody is looking for love, no matter where you live and, and what you're looking for. Everybody has a different criteria. I mean, that really shows on season three. Everybody was older on season three. They all had a very different set of criteria. Um, and But everybody at the end of the day just wants love. They want to be loved. They want to feel love and they want to share their life with someone. And whether that's they want kids or they don't, or they just want to continue on like that, that idea of marriage and love still very much exists. And for someone like me, who has felt super comfortable and happy being single and not with anybody for a long time, mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that when I met Jamal, I was even more happier than I was single. That's amazing and perfectly leads me into my next question because you have now found true love and congratulations on your engagement. Um, how has your relationship been going so far? Um, so it's been wonderful. Uh, we actually have enjoyed that we cannot share our relationship uh, until the season came out because it's just grown, like helped us grow closer without any interference. Um, and we've been doing a lot of, uh, the same things that we were doing before, except for now, um, we live together. Oh, awesome. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, we do expect to be wedding planning in the near future. We just have not set a location or anything of that nature. Um, and we're, we're really happy where we are. We want to travel. We're traveling a ton. Um, and that's our main goal right now is just to enjoy each other and make sure that we are on the same path or same pattern and goals and, and lifestyle. Yeah, and traveling is it's the time to travel. So I would definitely say it's the perfect time to do that. I traveled solo for many years uh, as part of my job. Um, and it, it was it was kind of lonely at times. I'll, I'll tell you that it was tough um, sitting at a, a hotel bar by yourself a lot or doing dinner by yourself. And it's tough. Um, but when I travel with Jamal, um, and, and most, this is something that people don't know, is uh, within like a month of us um, starting to date, uh, we we booked flights to go to um, Costa Rica and we started traveling together. And that's where I truly felt like this relationship is going to be great because we could travel together. We have the same sort of patterns because having that really is is hard. You can't have someone that's like fully into like traveling and then the other person's too laid back or it's just it's tough. We have the exact same idea when we travel. That's amazing. Um so kind of after having watched the entire season play out, is there one thing that you wish had been included, aired, or something that you wish you can clear up that was aired? Um, so that's a really good question. Uh, so yeah, so there's there's probably a couple things, but the the main thing is is that I I think um people are wondering why I asked for a Cindy guy and then um, I'm and I ended up with a, a Pakistani um, guy and so for me um, I want to clear that up that I never truly asked for a Cindy guy I said that was something that my father wanted um, and understanding how traditional my dad was um, and then when he passed away um, it was um, it was just hard. It was just a really hard experience. He was, he actually, you know, filmed with the team. He did his interviews and then he passed away. Um, and so he was the most excited about this journey. Um, and so I, when, when he passed away, I saw how lonely my mom was. Um, and I didn't want that. I wanted to have that, that lifetime with someone. Um, and so that's why I really, really threw myself into this process and really wanted to date. And so for that reason, um, I wanted to see if, you know, I had never really truly dated a Cindy guy before, or maybe once before. I wanted to see if it would work. Uh, and that's why, you know, when I said my dad had that preference, I was trying, I was trying every avenue to see if that would work. It unfortunately was not the right path, but I did find my right path. And that's what the process led to. And, and I believe that there was so much self growth that led to that, that that's what made me have everything like work out. Um, I truly was invested in the process and finding someone. Um, and that's what I was looking for. Yeah. And, and I think that viewers can really feel 
just how you invested you were in this journey and your relatability is really, really speaking to people. And I'm just so grateful that you shared some time with us today to speak about your journey on the show. Thank you so much, Malika. I'm really happy um, to, to join you today.